Welcome to another Foldit Lab Report. I am BKEP, here with my colleague Ian H. at the Institute for Protein Design in Seattle, Washington. If this is your first time tuning in, we produce these videos on the first of every month to tell you more about the science behind Foldit. In this lab report, I want to dive into some new research that was recently published by scientists here at the Institute for Protein Design. This is a paper all about protein binder design, where we're trying to design new proteins that can stick to natural protein targets. Researchers have been working hard to develop software to generate protein binders that can bind to a variety of targets, like the influenza protein hemagglutinin, or human proteins like the insulin receptor. If we could reliably create proteins that could stick to other proteins, that would be a huge step forward in how we treat or even detect diseases. This would impact cancer, diabetes, inflammation, in fact, just about any health disorder you can think of. In this landmark work, scientists developed a way to design binder proteins and applied it to 12 different protein targets. The researchers wound up creating binder designs that can stick to their targets as strongly, if not stronger than, antibodies. This is a major step forward. Never before have we been able to design proteins that can bind so tightly to so many different targets. So, let's have a look at what this team learned along the way. First, they found that not all targets are equal. Some are more difficult to bind than others, and their methods may not work as reliably in those cases. The key reason that makes a protein hard to bind comes down to the amount of hydrophobic residues that are exposed on its surface. This makes sense. Hydrophobic residues do not like water, so they are most stable when they are hidden away from solvent. A good binder actually helps the target hide exposed hydrophobics, and that's why they can happily stick together. This is also why we like to talk about hydrophobic patches as sticky handholds for protein binder design. This is important because all 12 targets in this paper have a fair amount of exposed hydrophobics. Even though the researcher's method is powerful for a variety of targets, there are still a lot of very difficult problems out there that we still struggle with. For example, you can think about the CD22 target that we talked about in the last video. Next, the researchers note that we still don't have a perfect way to predict which proteins are going to work in the lab. A lot of designs look great on the computer. They have excellent binder metrics, but in the lab they simply fail to bind the target. When it comes to binder metrics, the researchers found that contact surface is the most predictive across all targets. This is encouraging because we've seen that Foldit players are pretty good about optimizing contact surface. Moving forward, we'll want to make sure we continue to focus on the contact surface objective and fold it to maximize our chances of success. And that brings us to the last key point. Without a perfect way to predict successful binders ahead of time, we still have to test a lot of designs in order to find one that works. For hard targets, the IPD researchers generated over a million designs and then used strict filtering to throw out 90% of them even before lab testing. That's a lot of computer power. We're talking 10 to 100,000 computer hours for each target. That's the kind of power you can only get from a large supercomputer. And even though researchers are only testing the best 10% of their automated designs, the lab success rates are still pretty low, ranging from one out of 100 at best, and only one in 60,000 for the most difficult target. This is an area where folded players can do something that computers can't. Rather than throw away 90% of our designs, a critical human eye can see how a bad design might be improved. We think that Foldit players could change the game here. Even the best software can't see what you can see. So by working to improve your designs, you can develop binders that hit their mark. This month, we put together a special sandbox puzzle so that you can load into Foldit some of the binder designs from this paper. Take a look for yourself. Do you see any big differences from your own designs? Are there features in these binders that surprise you? This sandbox puzzle is a chance to see the very best that computers can do. So to summarize, from this paper we've learned that one, hydrophobic contacts are key for successful binding. Two, it's important to focus on contact surface. And three, computers are powerful but inefficient without the kind of 3D reasoning that the human mind is particularly good at. So for puzzle updates, We'll continue to see more binder design puzzles. 
for targets like CD22 or the TGF beta receptor. Of course, this is just one area where folded players are helping scientific research. We'll see more puzzles with electron density, where we're trying to find a protein fold that matches experimental data. Small molecule design, where you can change the atomic structure of a molecule so that it interacts with a protein target. And symmetric protein design, where we're trying to design a protein that self-assembles with other copies of itself. It's a lot of self. And that brings us to this month's design of the month. This month we have a symmetric design by Boots McGraw in puzzle 2121. Let's see, so I like to look at these designs with the protein design view preset. Uh, this shows all of the polar oxygens and nitrogens in red and blue. Uh, these are the, the atoms that need to make hydrogen bonds, either with water surrounding the protein or with other atoms in the protein itself. Now, if we hide symmetric chains and look at just the monomer unit, uh, we see this looks like a pretty reasonable protein fold. There's a, we see three helices packed nicely against a five-stranded beta sheet. So this is a larger protein design. Um, uh, these helices look pretty closely packed, very tight. Uh, lots of orange hydrophobics in the protein interior and blue polar residues decorate the outside. And that's good. That should help this protein fold up and remain soluble. Uh, we do see on the backside of this helix, on, on all of these helices, there are a lot of exposed hydrophobics. Um, on the one hand, this will create for tight binding between symmetric units, but it could interfere with protein folding if we're not careful. Fortunately, we see lots of very short minimal loops between all of the helices and all of the sheets, um, which is good. We uh, want to use as few loop residues as possible and focus on lots of sturdy secondary structure. Um, we do see, uh, even with some exposed hydrophobics, all of these helices, all of the secondary structure elements have some polar blue residues on them which is good, that we should make sure that they, they fold up correctly. Uh, if, if we have a helix that is entirely orange nonpolars, that would be a problem. Uh, we probably would not expect a helix to fold up out of 100% hydrophobic residues. Um, the problem, of course, with including blue polar residues at the interface is that they can create buns if they are not satisfied. Um, and that looks like a strength in this design, is that Boots has satisfied all of the polar atoms at the interface with a very nice hydrogen bond network here. Um, this is impressive. This should help confer specificity to our protein and prevent it from aggregating with other proteins in the cell or other hydrophobic matter. Um, so uh, this looks pretty good to me. I do see this one tryptophan here looks a little bit buried, and this amine group is not able to make a hydrogen bond. Um, that might not be too much of an issue as long as some water can get in here. This tryptophan looks maybe like there's just enough surface area to be exposed to water and, and satisfy that polar atom. Um, but that is the only thing I see that concerns me. All of the other atoms look to be very well satisfied. I'm pretty sure a water could get in here and, and, uh, and satisfy this other nitrogen over here. Um, so this looks to me like an excellent symmetric tetramer design. I think if we made this in the lab, um, I would say it has a pretty good chance of folding up into a tetramer like Boots designed. Um, so this is great work, as always. Uh, we love to see what designs you think are the most spectacular, regardless of how they score or how they rank on the Foldit leaderboards. So please share your favorite designs with Foldit scientists in all of our protein design puzzles. That's all for this month. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for playing, and we'll see you next time.